In honor of tonight's theme, I'd like to tell you all a short story to kick things off about how I was humbled when I became a father. A dog father, that is. <laughs> Parents in the room, you might scoff, but raising a little canine is the exact same thing as raising a child. <laughs> or, or at least uh, on some days, it's just as hard, right? In my teenage and college years, I worked at the Humane Society in a variety of places, the last one being New York City. Raised with dogs in our house since the time I was born, a good job in my eyes would be one where I got to interact with animals all day long. What I got instead was the reception desk on the weekends, spending 10 hours a day talking to the craziest of crazy pet owners all day long. Once, a woman called up demanding that we fit her little pooch into our already very busy schedule on a Saturday. Her dog needed a glow up, specifically a nail clipping from one specific doctor who did not work on the weekends. Pure delusions of entitlement which could not be reasoned down. When I denied her the day of appointment for the fifth time, she hung up the phone and marched down to the Humane Society with a screwdriver in hand in an attempt to stab me in the face. <laughs> a few people in the waiting room held her back as a coworker called the NYPD, so luckily no one got hurt from this encounter. But after it, I publicly vowed that I would never ascend to the level of wacko when I had a pet. My furry, friendly home would be filled with love and care, treats and snuggles galore, but you'd never catch me brandishing a flathead at someone just for a mani-pedi. <laughs> then came Barry. My wife, Sam, and I adopted Barry from AGWC Rock and Rescue out in Woodland Hills. He was and is our first dog as a couple of adults. And just to make it clear, Barry is alive and well and sleeping on my pillow at home. <laughs> Sam and I made a pact that we'd do the best job of dog owning that anyone had ever seen. Yeah, we're fun, young, hip. We named Barry after Bill Hader's titular hitman turned aspiring actor in the critically acclaimed HBO show debuting its final season tonight. No spoilers, please. Barry instantly bonded to Sam, with me holding a distant second place in his heart. <laughs> Not wanting to rush a connection, I gave him space. I thought it would be fine to leave him alone in an apartment for an hour or two on his first couple days with us. It wasn't. I thought he would provide many licks to the cheek to show affection. He didn't. Instead, he side-eyed everyone who wasn't Sam. A lot. And, <laughs> and best of all, when we took him out for walks, Barry would roll in or eat shit on Hollywood Boulevard, much to our shock and dismay. <sighs> I didn't think I was a bad pet parent per se until our second month together when Sam and I flew home for my mom's birthday. Sam had registered Barry as an emotional support animal, meaning that not only could he fly with us in the cabin, but he didn't need to be in a carrier. Right on the lap would do well for a shell-shocked shelter dog who had never once flown before on a plane. Of course, as a new family, we were running late to the airport, just barely able to board as the gate closed behind us. Sam took a seat towards the back of the plane while I wedged my way into a middle seat up front with Barry. A couple of very nice fellow passengers who definitely didn't want a dog sandwiched between them sat on both sides of us. Separated from Sam, brimming with anxiety at every noise from the engine and generally losing his mind before takeoff, Barry squirmed, then thrashed, then freaked out. I held tight, petting his head and trying to calm his little doggy fears. Treats didn't work. Belly scratches couldn't either. Barry fought, wiggled, and then somehow Houdinied his way out of his harness just as the plane was taking off. 
This was an early morning flight with everyone still groggy from waking up at the crack of dawn to jet a few states over. The last thing they wanted in the dark morning hours of that Southwest flight was to have the late guy who was holding up the departure turn around and yell seemingly to the entire coach cabin, he's loose. (laughs) How the air marshal didn't tackle me right then and there will forever remain a mystery. I excused myself and headed towards the back, interrogating my fellow sky travelers. Have you seen a dog? Did a dog come by here? Tell me if you see a little dog. Sam was stuck in her seat trying to coax Barry, wherever he was, to seek her out. Finally, a flight attendant called me to the back of the cabin where Barry sat shaking nervously. She pulled down the seat near the galley, offering it to us as a private family moment, as well as not to violate any more safety protocol than we already had. I held Barry in my arms until we reached a cruising altitude. Then we returned to our original middle seats up front to annoy the hell out of our aisle mates for another three hours. Barry and I had more run-ins at airports, only now we did it as a team. Berating TSA agents for their pet carrier rules. Does my dog stay in or come out? Pick one, guys. I felt like a drunk weekend dad yelling at Little League umpires. I might not be the best at it, and Barry might not be either, but for better or worse, we are human father and dog son, bonded at long last. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. We might be just a little nutso when it comes to how much we love him.